I've had many requests for the Ski Quiver of 2324. And I know this is a obscene uh, display of gear, but my, my saving grace or my philosophy that I always come back to is that I only keep and I only pursue things that I use. So we'll start off with the Venerable uh, light setup. This is my ultra light setup. For me, this is the lightest ski I will uh, use and that I have used for the last three years. I got these, whatever version these are, I got them when they were new that year. It's the Ski Trab Magico 2 with the Trab uh, Titan Gera Vario something binding, but it's their lightest one. I don't know if they make this version anymore. And then I ski this with, right now, the F1 XT. And it's just for big long days or just when I just need my lightest setup. If we're doing something where I just need light, we're going far. Um, and I love this ski because for its weight, we're talking about like a five pound setup altogether, 5.2 pounds, skis and bindings. It skis amazing. This is the Hagan Ultra 89. This will be my objective ski for the season. If you recall last year, I skied on the Core 89. That's the ski I took to uh, Ecuador when we skied on Tisana and we skied Chimborazo. I thought that was a great ski. It was not the lightest ski for its size, for its width, and that was purposely what I was looking for. I wanted something solid, damp, confidence inspiring, but light enough that it would not hold me back on that mission. So I was planning on picking up just another set of their newest Core 89 and Mike Hogan had just gotten back from skiing Mount Baker um, and he said that he used the Core or the Ultras and he thought they were a great objective ski and they were damp and they were, you know, solid and he talked them up and he convinced me and so that's what I went with. They are lighter than the Core. Uh, series by probably a good hundred grams, maybe more. This setup comes in at 6.7 pounds. 6.7 pounds skis and bindings. I put the Hagan Pinup 10 Evo. So again, not the lightest strip down binding, but a light binding with some good features, good risers. I'm excited. These, these look awesome. I think they're going to be a great ski. This is the everyday. This is season three, I think, on the Rosignol Escaper 97 Nano. This setup altogether is seven pounds, seven pounds skis and bindings. And this is my everyday. I just love having like a hundred millimeter-ish ski. I'm never uh, worried about bringing, you know, too much or too little. Light enough, doesn't slow me down. These have been a great pair of skis. And I ski it with, either this boot, the Solomon, but again, it's like, I prefer to ski it with the F1. These boots just, it's just like how they fit my foot and just how they feel when I ski. It's been hard to find a better boot. And I know I've said that this boot, the MTN Summit, the Solomon was gonna replace it or maybe gonna replace it. And you'll notice I still have both of them here because I can't decide. All right, new ski this year. This is my weight weenie powder ski, the Alptrax, Movement Alptrax 106. This is their new shape. I had their old version that I sold in a, in a rage after I broke my hip when I liquidated my, uh, liquidated my ski quiver. And it's the one ski that I kind of regretted selling because I just don't think there's a ski at this weight. This essentially weighs the same as those Rosignol Escapers. It's like a 1300 gram ski in a 106 and it skis so good. This new shape is supposed to be a little more progressive or free ride. Where the old ski, I felt like you could just bomb high speed on you know powder or soft snow and it would actually do well on hard snow because of how stiff it is. Supposedly these are a little more um, playful. This is what I'm gonna take out with the lightweight bros when I'm worried in the back of my mind that I'm gonna be you know, the slowest guy there, but it's a powder day and I do not want to take anything, you know, skinny. These will be the skis. I'll probably ski them with like an F1 XT or 
maybe the Solomon. 6.9 pounds for the setup, skis and bindings. Like I said, that's even lighter than my everyday setup. This is the one I'm really excited about. 2022 DPS Dreamtime sale. They call it a sale. It's not really a sale, but anyway, Dreamtime, they released the Powderworks 110 uh, Tour in the C2 shape. If you know anything about DPS skis and nerd out on it, their biggest powder ski, the, the Whaler 112 or the Pagoda 112, is their RP shape, which is kind of the, we used to call it kind of the banana powder shape ski, real rockered, super fun to ski, super turny, just easy to turn, you know, the, the, the powder day dream ski. For me though, that ski, I, I wanted that ski in like a 184 or even like if it was a resort ski, I'd be skiing that in like a 195 just because it's so easy to turn, opening it up at high speed with anything shorter than like a 185 for me just wasn't as stable as I'd like. They made this ski, the 110, it's the same, their Pagoda construction, their light touring construction, but in their C2 shape, which is just a little more directional, meaning that you can, just a little more stable at speed, a little more, I guess, traditional the way that I'm used to skiing powder skis. But when it was released in 2022, it was like $1,600 or $1,700 and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I ended up picking up the Armada 112s, which I loved. And I think we did a review on those. I was able to find these on a price that I could not let go. So I decided this is gonna be kind of my powder touring ski this year. Put the DPS um, R10 on it with the free ride spacers. So it's like a lighter binding than like a Raider, you know, the ATK Raider, but still has that, that contact, that kind of solidity, solidness, whatever that, that I want. I will ski this with most likely the F1, but I could actually use like the radical on it too if just it was that type of day where I just wanted to charge super hard. Maybe we got a little heli assist to a tour or something. Um, you know, this is what I skied with the Armada mostly last year. Love, love, love this boot. I wish it was like 50 grams lighter, but oh well. So last but not least, I just thought I'd throw it in. I have had a like side country set up for a couple of years. I just like to see how the other half lives sometimes. You know, guys that, that tour on what we consider heavy gear, but still this is lighter than any traditional resort setup. This is the Dinafit Free 107. This year they rebranded this. I think they call it the Tigard 107. Same ski, just different top sheet. Big burly, this is like the rat rotation 14? Yeah, 14. I think it's the biggest one they make. And I ski this with this Lang XT3 Tour boot. And man, it's like, this is the super combo. I can barely notice the difference between my like dedicated resort skiing setup. Full disclosure, that's not all the skis that I own currently. <laughs> But again, there's a constant churn in and out. There will be some wild cards appearing. There's a there's a special, special wild card somewhere between Norway and Salt Lake City right now that I'm really excited about. Thanks for watching all that. Thanks for listening to my ramblings and really love, love it when we get to see you guys out there. Hope you have a great season.